you hear me now? There we go. <laughs> Oh, relax now. Keep it. Keep it. You're doing great. Oh, well, this is Tad3. Uh, ready to... Live. How exciting. For We're seeing actual footage YouTube. from space. That looks very CGI. Tad Who knew space looks so CGI? Sorry. <laughs> uh, oh, well, 3. Uh, sorry. Oh, well, this is Tad3. Ready to show mis uh, estimated mis assistance for OD-132. Copy EDL put Tom Cruise in to separate the, <laughs> the capsules. <laughs> I'm sorry to bring that. I'm I'm trying to bring some uh, space technical knowledge, but um, I, I'm a bit limited. I I do know a bit. I'm quite fascinated by space. Are you, are you, are, are you a space Our man? Our have all confirmed the results of the transmitter drive off. strategic back on that. Oh, that. I used GDL to have a, I used to go to the library and always get books point, out GDL. space. At this time, I'd like to disable the alarms before EDL and I, I'm guessing... So please disable all the alarm files in the well, one, activity activity two, session. back on that. Copy oh, that. Right. Copy AL2. Copy, copy that. It's a shame. Falcon 9, is that is that the is that the Elon Musk stuff, the um, SpaceX? That stuff is fascinating. I mean, that is I I, I did watch I watched the um, the test launch. That was a few weeks back, wasn't it? Or was it really? Oh, but uh, hang on, am I, no, am I going mad? I'm saying they, they did they did some testing, some landing testing a few weeks ago, didn't they? Yeah, the ones that look like proper old-fashioned rockets, all chrome and brilliant. Oh, well, one EDL GNC voice check after battery swap. I read you five guys. Oh, the Tesla! Gosh, that was. Is it really? Gosh, I remember that so well. That going up. Gosh. So this um, the, all this technology that the um perseverance landings going ahead is that all NASA technology or is that in collaboration with SpaceX in any way? Okay. Oh my gosh, got space. Yeah, of course. I forgot that was a thing now. The Space Force. Yeah. Did you watch that? So I'm going off Tom. Did you did you watch the Netflix series, The Space Thing? With, um, Dave Crow. Yeah, it wasn't great. Wait, <laughs> You didn't, you didn't miss much. To be honest, with you. I mean, my God, the budget Netflix for at it was amazing. It was quite incredible. It's like Jesus, eye watering the stuff they were doing on it. But yeah, you know, you haven't got the lines. You've got the lines. Hmm. I'll do my best. Oh, I want this is Tad one. 
Guys, had one? Flight uh, via we have a toad D135 the transition uh, to EDL main mode. Uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we have disabled impulse detection, position alarm detection channel, and our marking our EDL uh, is slightly down from 148.1 here to 38. Happy Thank activity. you, Tad 1. Welcome to EDL main. Just a reminder, flight, that we'll have a five-minute wait before we see the remaining telemetry in the EDL set. Sure, please. All stations on EDL, we are about 20, about 19 minutes from our uh, time to be in our seats with no further breaks. <laughs> What you mean is they're not becoming, they're not doing second place ever, and they need to be the first to land again. Hello, Langley, back on net. Just so you know, those uh, warnings that Happy we saw Langley. on the transition mm. are expected. Copy activity. Well, tab two is going to be off for two. Happy tab two. Yeehaw! So well, entry guidance. Not so off. <laughs> Happy entry guidance. You're coming in about three by five, by the way. Imagine if they found oil on Mars. That would be, gosh, would be screwed. Well, activity in phase. Uh, mm -hmm. Just be aware there's going to be something going on here on Volca, so we may hold the updates for the next few events. You read it, you? Mm, yes. Hmm. Mm, yeah. The room to do our updates here. Support. Cooling. Mm. Mm. Go for it. So, uh, can you give the team a briefing on what happens at EDL main with the configuration of the system? Yeah, so Activity gave you uh, a great rundown of all of the things that oh, really? oh. uh, critical transitions. Uh, but just to give everyone a little more of an idea of what this means I, for the spacecraft, we have. I see. So, so. I did wonder this earlier. I think about it. so we've never actually we there's not a piece of Mars rock that exists on Earth. Nothing's, nothing's ever get back. That, that's really interesting. I did not know that. That's that's very interesting. So my God, that's so everything that's ever been analyzed. On Mars. I guess that it's always spectrographs and data they have on board the rovers they've sent, isn't it? Yeah, that's really interesting. No, that's just uh, like I mm. mentioned, we have uh, gone ahead and disabled all the system fault detection responses because we no longer yeah. need the spacecraft to stop and wait for intervention from the ground to recover. In fact, we need the exact opposite. God, that's amazing already, isn't it? <sighs> to continue moving through the events of EDL, um, depending on what is largely a single string system with selective redundancy to do the best job it can. Uh, so this is a good time to remind the team that success in ED, in, of EDL is not guaranteed. Wow, okay. Um, but uh, we can be assured that, you know, a large part of our design was flight proven by MSL. So yeah. also, as uh, Activity mentioned, we uh, marked a set of EDL critical devices healthy, uh, regardless of their previous state. Uh, and we told the spacecraft to stop any uh, in-progress CBM windows and any in-progress uh, SFP responses, although uh, we had neither of those active at the time. Uh, although many parts of the spacecraft are essential for EDL, um, the things that we mark healthy include uh, the TDS, our landing radar, uh, both uh, DIMUs and the uh, vision compute element and the DMCA. Yeah. Uh, we've also
also gone ahead and um, set the vehicle config in case mm -hmm. uh, we get a reset at the end of EDL. To make and sure that, when the vehicle yeah, and that's so that's they haven't even that is, built that, that said rocket. That is just a long, long term goal then. I'll pause here uh, as we wait mm -hmm. yes. for the event of EDL start. EDL start anchor has continued. We've seen mm. the EDL 2000 sequence complete, uh, powering off the LCM heater. Uh, we are proceeding to reinforce device Hello base. One. Entry and guidance back on net. Copy you read me. Bye bye. Reacquire our Malik to Pseudo Celestial IMU. World well, 2, tap 2 is back on net. Copy, tap 2. Hello, oh, guidance 2, take 2. Copy activity. Hmm. Copy guidance. So, Dan. Oh my god, Tony. Gosh, wow. Long way away, but not a long way away. So Dan, I'm I'm playing um I'm playing Super One here as well. So obviously carbon is an indicator of is an indicator of life, but then it is one of the most abundant elements in the universe, as I as I believe it. It's number six on the table, isn't it? Pure on the table? That's my is it my score hang on. Oh look at that. Sorry, number six. There you go. That's my that, I'm impressed with that. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so why does carbon indicate life? Mm -hmm. The flight, the warnings we saw um, so far are all expected. Mm -hmm. Copy activity. Okay, phase two, you want to continue with the uh, description you were giving? Mm. Yeah, third flight. Uh, so uh, right now we are. Uh, we're doing two things. We're taking this opportunity to mm -hmm. reinforce uh, the state of the spacecraft. Um, a lot of the actions that we're doing right now, uh, the devices are already in this state. Um, this is something that we mm -hmm. do uh, just to make sure that the spacecraft okay. is uh, in the state we want it. Um, after any type of uh, oh, I see. May have been I okay, I see. Uh, we didn't have that situation today, but that's why some of these actions are here. That relates to. Uh, uh, I see. We started um, the EDL start anchor. Uh, we I, have gone I see. So you could. Oh, okay. No, I, I, I think I think you're right along that sense. So basically, the biology of living carbon, as it were, has a different um, half life to say carbon that is, say, diamond or graphite. I see, yeah. Uh, coast down thermally and be at the right temperature when we use it uh, later on, just before backfill step. Uh, we also have our uh, RCS tap beds. Um, so is there a... Uh, still on and... Uh, so is there a chance of... Those, uh, thruster tap beds. Is there a wholeheartedly full chance of finding... Uh, during guided entry. What I want to say is, are they, are they have no change in expecting the to find microbes or maybe sort of early life forms single cell maybe stuff on the on the surface of this clay say fossilized uh, should remain the same uh, but the backup computer running second chance uh, will have armed itself really and uh, prepared to it is prepared to take over as we go through edl if we should experience any type of reset from the front mm -hmm. computer oh, back on that. copy that so let's see off net for two copy as we speak, we are right. um, transitioning CBM states, um, and I think uh, activity is going to give us a little more uh, information on that in their update. Yeah, copy phase. Uh, the CBM change, uh, as I mentioned previously, is to the EDL reserve to a non-coherent row. Activity. Copy flight. EDL phase, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Flight, proceed. Talk, I guess, to the team. All right. Uh, you know, I'm terrible. Like, yes. So, reputation. No, I read. I read. And, uh, I saw you put the notes. But I was fascinated by that because I, because I was talking to my dad earlier, and I read for the notes about this, this helicopter, and, I, and my dad said, "Helicopter? Mars hasn't got any air." And obviously, it's got very, like you said, it's got very thin air. But I thought by now it would have lost everything. I guess what is there is just kept on by 
its own gravity then not the atmosphere because that's been stripped away by the sun hasn't it Why not? Um, and she's right on target, right? He, he did the last maneuver literally two months ago. Right? It's just pretty incredible, in my opinion. Um, and she's armed with the right information to help us land. You know, doing the parameter update last night, we're, we're ready to roll. You've done everything right. Um, and you've put up with us, too, right? You've put up with our eccentricities and uh, the things we like to do in EDL land. So I very much appreciate that. Uh, so uh, okay. you all should sleep in on Friday since, uh, I, you know, you guys have earned it. Um, Thanks for literally and figuratively putting us in the right position to succeed. And uh, let's land on Mars together. Copy EDL team. And uh, as flight director, I also would like to thank the whole team. I see. Okay. So, so, sorry, I'm getting back to my basic Mars remembering thing. So, so quite recently in, let's say, the last, well, I guess, millennia or two, Mars had significant much more significant amounts of oxygen on its surface, yes? Is that fair to say? Kudos to you. Mission, would you like to say something? Yeah, just echoing the same words. That is why, oh my god. Oh, oh, that was, okay, hi, hi everybody. Oh, do you know what? I did the intro and everything so well. That was all so professional. And I've just not been talking for this whole time. Oh really? Oh damn! They've been able so to hear sorry. you, just well, not me. <laughs> thanks everyone for listening to my random questions to Dan, and which you haven't got any answers to. It's just been me posing questions. <laughs> oh well, I'm going to ignore that and uh, brush over it. I did just think I heard some cool out, hey, so look, I'm going to turn the feed like This room is only as half as full as it would be if we weren't in this pandemic so missing so the recap is, everyone is what we've uh done break for just one there. second because i'm listening yeah, to the account on that oh sure welcome to the EDL family i think that was just a safety briefing pretty sure that was just a briefing okay we'll uh, turn our feedback down uh, i know i can't say anything about your starts havoc but in fairness, I've been live for 24 hours, which is why my mic was muted, because I obviously had it muted while I wasn't actually live live. So um, I just forgot to turn it back on. Anyway. <laughs> hey, you live and you learn. You live and you learn. I do live and you learn, and I won't make that mistake again. To be fair, I'm actually I'm looking at getting another machine to run these streams from. Um, I might have gotten a steal on eBay. <laughs> to be able to do so, um, Spicy. which will mean that I won't have fuck ups like that. Uh, anyway, so what were we talking about before we broke for that? We out? were talking about uh, how Atmosphere. Mars has lost. Yes, that's the one. Um, yeah, so we don't know why it's it's losing its hydrogen and oxygen, and that's what. Uh, that's one of the mission objectives for the Alamal uh, satellite, or the, the HOPE satellite from UAE, um, which is, is designed to study the atmospheric layers of Mar Mars um, in, in more detail than we've ever seen it before, which is why it's in orbit at the moment. Uh, and it, it, its main purpose is to study that dramatic climate change in the atmosphere and tell us why it happened, what happened, um, and then, A, it will give us sort of an idea of whether Earth is going down the same path. Hopefully it's not. Um, and also, we can then try and work on a way to give Mars an atmosphere artificially. So that when we do send humans and uh, living creatures, because we might not just send humans to Mars... They can survive without protective gear, not necessarily protective gear because of radiation, but without um, having to wear life support systems. Gosh, I mean, that's that's hundreds of years, surely, in the future, isn't it? Pro we get that probably. I mean, the terraform of planet. People are suggesting that we'll, we'll be traveling to Mars by 2030. I would like to think so. I think that that's definitely possible. Um, yeah. 
but I think un until Mars is properly ready to receive people it will be 50, 100 years down the line uh, from when we first land humans there. I mean, if you look at what we've done with the moon, for example, not to say the Mars will be the same because it definitely won't because people will be way more focused on Mars missions. But we went to the moon several times and we, we haven't been back there in however many years until uh, the Artemis program, which was started uh, not that long ago, said, yeah, we'll go back to the moon by 2024. Um, which is another thing that obviously Starship and... Uh, Oh God! I keep forgetting the people who are involved with HLS, the Human Landing System. Oh well, never mind. Um, Starship is the, is is my main contender, even though I don't think they're going to get the contract. <laughs> really, gosh. But yes, that. So I I I think it's it's it is definitely a long, 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 long way down the line. Long no way. No, I get that completely. It's but I definitely think it's, it's, it? it's going to happen at some point. I don't know. I'm more optimistic for the 2040s, I think. Yeah, I would say. I mean, you know, obviously I think SpaceX are way more efficient at doing things in a timely manner, manner even if it is in Elon time. Uh, sorry, Elon, I know you don't like being told that, but your timing is shit. <laughs> um... Yeah, so I think they, they're going to... I mean, commercial travel in spaceflight is faster than going through NASA. But that's because NASA has to work with commercial partners, whereas SpaceX can do everything themselves, for example. The same with yeah, so uh, ULA and Blue this. Origin, etc. Yeah. Um, so I, I think we'll see way more development, but whether anything happens will be down to NASA um, and whether they um, duplicate the uh, HLS program, the Human Landing System program, which is taking humans back to the moon, and whether they duplicate something similar for taking humans to Mars, for example. What's the better benefits of colonizing Mars and, say, than the moon? Why don't we focus on what element? Uh, uh, the moon you know, what doesn't do. have enough atmosphere to sustain life. Um, and it doesn't have enough, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it, it does, it doesn't have, yeah, so it's got a way weaker gravity than Mars does. Um, I think Moon is 0 0.1 G and Mars is 0 0.4, 0 0.6. Numbers off the top of my head might not be accurate. Um, but also like to, to, for example, cultivate on the moon uh, and to terraform uh, would be a much larger process than it would be on Mars, for example, because Mars, uh, the atmosphere is rich in nitrogen. Because I, uh, I think, yeah, nitrogen and methane. And methane, obviously, we can use to sustain uh, stuff like plant growth. And um, yeah. there's a lot of carbon dioxide in no, there isn't a lot of carbon dioxide. What the fuck am I talking about? Um, but the, the Mars is a lot better for cultivation, um, which is why we're we're focusing on on going to Mars rather than going to. But then, but then also, surely, Dan, like you said earlier, the, the radiation—it's just enormous, isn't it? You could, I, I think, I swear, I swear, I saw a, a fact somewhere that you could only live for three years on Mars, and then you get your maximum dosage of radiation your human should have. In their in their lifetime, uh, so that's another reason why Mars is a better contender for um, sending for living on than the Moon, because the Moon has no atmosphere at all; it has barely any. So it is way more open to the elements and way more open to the solar radiation uh, than Mars is. Mars, while it is worse than Earth, uh, way worse than Earth, it. it has more protection because it's got a layer of atmosphere, however thin it is at the moment. And if we can beef that atmosphere up to, say, the same point it is on Earth, and as um, Elon Musk suggested, the easiest way of doing that is just to drop a thermonuclear bomb on the poles. Um, 
if, if we can why, beef up the why, atmosphere, why? it would provide more um, more protection, similar protection to what why is that? Why is that, Dan? Because I, as I understand it, Mars is a dead planet. And obviously, it's lost its core is solid now. It's it's frozen over time, which means it's lost its um, magnetic field. That obviously, protects. It's what was its atmosphere from the sun, like Earth has. We have you know the Northern Lights because our pole, our, the core is still molten, and it collect and generates the magnetic field out in space. But obviously, Mars doesn't have that. So surely, if we did beef up the atmosphere, it would be stripped away again within. 100 years or so i don't know um and i, I think <laughs> i think the answer there is that we don't have we don't have enough data on the core to know for sure because we know it's obviously colder than earth um and we know that things have changed drastically on mars but we don't know the causes and that's as i say that's one of the things that um alamal is there to do uh, that's one of the things that if we bring samples back, we'll have a better idea um, because there might be evidence as to what's happened inside those samples. Because as, as I said, as, as we've mentioned before, um, Mars did have flowing water on it. And everywhere else that we have found water on Earth, um, there has been life. Where there is carbon and there is water, life evolves, life, life is born. Um, so if we can find evidence of carbon and if we can find, uh, we have evidence of water on the surface, then there's a pretty good chance that, um, <laughs> that there was life on Mars at some point. I don't know why I went high pitched. I'm still just good. I saw the aliens have contacted us now and they're coming through loud and clear with their <laughs> high pitched voices. I got replaced. Um, so we are now <laughs> under half an hour until touchdown. So I'm going to bring up the countdown there just a tad. ACF knowledge nice. is uh, Havoc has suggested that obviously radiation um, can be stopped by lead. Well, you know, most radiation can by lead. I mean, it still gets in. And also, lead's heavy, isn't it? It's very heavy. It would not be practical to take that amount of lead to, to Mars. Um, also, very toxic. <laughs> also very toxic. So you wouldn't want to send it on a crew mission. I mean, Havoc, I'm not ruling out. I'm just saying it's impossible um, for the moment. Yeah, so it, it, that's, th there are solutions to blocking solar radiation. The, mo the most, I say the simplest one. It's definitely not the simplest one, but the most accurate one. Or... Back to 50. We, yes. That's what we do. We coat the planet in it. We coat the planet in Factor 50 sunscreen. Douse <laughs> Mars in Factor 50. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what we do, and then we live. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, yeah, the mo the most <laughs> prominent theory is that we need to increase the atmosphere protection or atmospheric protection. Um, but I don't think we know how we're going to do that yet. We will first start uh, shortly. Here we'll get. News that, that's uh, fair. So, sorry, you said you made a reference earlier. Old Muskie, uh, old Elon or Muskie, talking about that. dropping nuclear uh, devices at the poles. For, is that to unlock all the? Because that's that's where all the carbon. The I don't know the science Mars. behind what he wants to do with that, but I know he mentioned it at one point. The entry process. Um, <laughs> uh, I did just so hear a call out: starting entry process. Uh, and, uh, yes, Havix uh, put Kirkland on Sun Zero, which I <laughs> we'll enjoyed be, uh, a lot there. <laughs> gathering data from our medley sensors, um, and uh, we'll be what you could do, you could write, rapidly, you could write, point, fuck you, uh, Sun, in Sun Cream on Mars, so it'd burn, uh, and just, you just have, <laughs> fuck, you, fuck you, Sun, uh, in, uh, in its lovely back ready back flesh. Um, and uh, this will allow us to I'm a scientist, that's how Mars works, I know uh, as we make our way through the atmosphere, um, and uh, this is one of the things that allowed uh, MSL, the Curiosity rover, um, to uh, um, to land where it did. Uh, the um, uh, Tabak just said, you know, land landing is probably more effective and feasible uh, than the atmosphere thick enough. Uh, to help get us this, uh, um, yeah. It's just impractical yeah. to get yeah. it there. Uh, as we make our way, uh, I mean, it's the infrastructure of space, isn't it? Really, that's what they always talk about, you know. Yes, entry, the space elevator and having multiple uh, things in orbit, you know, the full Star Trek docks in orbit, and then you go off to the moon, and then you got the moon base, and you go off to Mars, and then you go off to whatever planet else we can inhabit, or not any planets in this system, probably the moons. 
uh, we need to get rid of a uh, set of balance You're houses, uh, That's uh, that good, isn't it? Been, Is that right? You wrote this up. Uh, giving us Jupiter's a, moon. Uh, That's the one has all the volcanoes. Yes, I think so. That's the very volcanically active one. Yeah. I think there's liquid water in it, don't I? I think underneath the surface because of the, the, the gravitational pull on Europa, it just heats it up. Yes. Fascinating. Europa is quite fascinating. Mm. Sorry, I'm trying. I'm this is true trying to listen to the the um, countdown net to work out what they're talking about. I think they're just running through the process. Uh, we will Let's go back and whisper if I can have it. Just put a reason why there could be lead there already. And, uh, this is also true. That's true. I mean, mining on Mars. Seventeen seconds later. You got to mine Mars, and then you got to get robots to do it for you. <laughs> and whispering on Mars. <laughs> I'm gonna hold here for uh, EDL prep as uh, we're about to start that anchor. Holding for EDL prep. Don't know what that means. Um, probably could have read up on that before, but <laughs> could have read up on the callouts to expect. But um, I think we're about five minutes from separation, which will be the start of the process. Of um, and by the time, so when when my clock on our screen says eleven minutes something, mm. um, yeah. the rover will be on the ground. Gee whiz. In okay, some way well, or another, finished. whether it's landed or whether it's crashed, it, it will be on the floor. Uh, so my countdown timer is until we get confirmation from uh, the signal, uh, yeah, which wow, is expected okay. around 2055. But... Um... Oh, hang on. So we're in... Sorry, sorry, Dan. Do you mean... Obviously, we're in T minus now, aren't we? Yes. So do you mean... When we're in positive 11, so, or when we actually hit 11? Well, when we hit T minus 11, um, yeah. it will be on, be on the ground. ground in some shape. When, when we hit T minus oh, zero, that's when we're expecting to get the radio confirmation that it's on the ground. Oh, I see. And if we don't get that, we presume that it's lost. Yes, basically. Um, and we there's a, a brief period of about seven minutes, um, known as the seven minutes of hell, which um, we don't have any communication with the craft at all because it's going through the atmosphere and plasma will build up on the antenna, which means it won't be able to speak to us. So there'll be seven minutes of blackout. Um, and then when we reacquire that signal, it'll be yeah. just before it hits the ground. So we'll have, we'll have a, a slight blip, which will either stop signaling. Something's gone very, very wrong. Um, or, it, you know, we won't get the confirmation that, for example, like parachutes are deployed and uh, parachutes are separated, engines start up for the uh, sky crane, etc. Um, that sort of stuff we will miss. Uh, that, that sort, that's the sort of stuff that we'll see. Cool. How exciting. I mean, I, yeah, the radar blip, that's, that's the tensional uh, film, especially Apollo 13, when they're coming through and... The they can, are they there? Are they there? It's the three minutes of silence. Yes. Unbearable. Uh, of course, the, also is, the difference uh, with it happening on Earth is you can at least watch them on Earth. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> on Mars, even if we could see Mars, we can't because it's pretty much to the side of the sun. But even if we could see Mars like through a telescope, we still wouldn't know because of the speed of light and the radio waves travel at the speed of light. So they would come in at the same time. That's mad, isn't it? That's fascinating. Isn't it? Is it five hours from? No. How long? What's the time delay from the sun to Earth? Eight minutes. No. Four minutes. minutes. Yeah. No, I think you're right with eight minutes. I swear I've heard that before. I know. Uh, so our, our, our current distance Mars. from Mars is 11 minutes something seconds. That's as much as I know when it comes to time delay at this moment. Wow. 11 minutes. Oh, I so see. That's, so that's, that's light speed. Yes. No. Well, radio speed, yes. Uh, radio waves travel at the speed of light. Do they? Thank you. I yeah. did not know that. No, I've been corrected. That's exciting. I'll add that down. That is cool. Uh, and that's obviously, I, 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 I imagine the number that I've got, the, the T0 I've got, is accounting for uh, change in speed as it goes through the atmosphere, because obviously it slows down when it hits the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. it, light travels faster in vacuum than it does in atmosphere, etc. And then... So, 
on this, unlike other things, the shoot won't deploy. It will be this helicopter thing that will guide it down. Is that right? Uh, no. So there will be a parachute that deploys uh, okay. once it's going at a safe speed, once the atmosphere has slowed it down enough, which will bring it down to um, the point where it can detach its heat shield. Cool. Uh, and then once it's detached its heat shield, um, there, there's a there's a, like a crane inside the parachute stage, mm -hmm. which uh, will lower the craft, the lower Perseverance down to the surface. And then when it cuts its parachute, because it will cut its parachute um, like quite a way off the ground, and then the, mm -hmm. the sky crane has um, four rockets on it, which will fire to guide it down and then there's an internal guidance system which will decide the best place to actually set the rover down using data that we've um, gathered from previous Mars landings uh, and then once it sets it down it lets go of the uh, rover basically as it touches the ground and then flies okay, itself yeah. about a kilometer uh, a kilometer away so that it doesn't crash when it runs out of fuel for example so it, it basically just yeets itself out of the area Ah, um, which we, <laughs> which we will pick up on seismic rafts all around Mars. Really, wow! Because it'll it's, it's a big impact. So uh, Perseverance will see it as an earthquake. Uh, ingen not Ingenuity Insight will see it, and there's a couple more rovers that are still active on Mars, which I will, will definitely um, see wow, it as it comes so in. That's like, they're like ten years old now, though, aren't they? I guess it's like just solar panels, and they're powered by. Uh, so the most Mars rovers, uh, Insight is powered by solar power, but I think we're just about on stage set, cruise set. Um, give me two seconds. Sure, sure. Twelve and a half minutes, um, which means basically any second now we're going to see the cruise stage detach. Um, so I'll keep an eye out for that. Uh, yeah, cool. Right, where was I? What was I talking about? Uh, you were talking about uh, the power source of the other rovers. Yes, on so Mars. the other other rovers are powered by uh, nuclear power stations, basically. Wow, uh, really? Yeah, that are basically built into them so that they have a effectively, in terms of the amount of power they use and the amount of power that they've got stored, um, could last ages. Like, multiple... Like, we're expecting uh, Perseverance to last 10 years. Its, um, oh, its mission goal is one Mars year, which is 674 days, about. Um, okay. But it's expected to continue getting extended and extended up to 10 years. That's 90 right. seconds till separation. Okay. We are switching to the MFSK tones. Telemetry will stop. Telecom is confirming that the spacecraft has switched to broadcasting tones. These tones are received directly from Perseverance, but have... Cool. We're set and ready. Content. They won't receive real-time information until about um, nine, ten minutes. Pulling up count on that. Orbiter starts relaying cool. information from Perseverance. We are under a minute from cruise stage separation, about ten and a half minutes from entry interface. Just under a minute. And this, this is the part where Palm starts to get sweaty because, I mean, we, we sent the final sort of commands to the um, cruise stage or to, to the rover, mm. uh, like, a couple of days ago. Um, but this is the point where we lose contact, and there's nothing we can... There's nothing we can do now. But this is the point where there's really nothing we can do. Because they're in there, they're, they're going away. They're whirling and away from the computers. Again, there we like go, so separation. Oh, shit, sorry. So, that's okay. So, this obviously happened ten minutes ago, but we've just had confirmation of separation. That's mad, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, about 
60 seconds away from confirmation of D-spin, where it'll stop itself spinning relative to the planet. There we go, confirmation from the spacecraft. In about one minute, Perseverance's wow. landing software will wake up and begin the final preparations for entry. The first action it will do is to fire warm-up pulses with its entry thrusters. These pulses ensure that the spacecraft gets the thrust that it wants during entry interface. We are about nine minutes from entry interface. Here we go. Don't know why I'm getting so scared. I've got I've got no money invested in this. They've got two point <laughs> eight billion. Hey, but you're broadcasting live. You're looking actually like probably the report like the scientists in that room right now, sweaty palms. Yeah. <laughs> Excited. Computer computer screen, mask on. To be fair, I, I was got about a brand next year. I was for like the hour before we went live because I was like, oh no, I've got to now get everything set up and everything's live. Uh, as it, uh, Here we go, D spin. Beam to the earth. Telecom indicated actually that we could see a signal that the crew stage went between the Perseverance entry capsule and Earth. So we saw a little blip, uh, the data stream Our indicating crew stage separation. We have That's interesting. confirmation that the vehicle has started warming hmm. up those entry thrusters. What was that about? pulses have begun. Uh, when they detached the stage, it went between uh, the rover and Earth, so we saw a blip in the connection. Right, balanced masses have been ejected. The is trying to stop its spin from BBM. the cruise two revolutions per minute down to zero, and then we'll turn to its desired orientation from entry. It will se separate the two balanced masses that have kept it balanced during all of cruise. This will allow the entry capsule to have lift when it enters the atmosphere. We have confirmation that the aircraft has turned to the desired entry attitude. We are about seven and a half minutes from entry interface. Wow. I've got to say, I'm finding the velocity and the miles from landing site, all these numbers going down, very fascinating. Yes. Uh, so I believe this is, simu this, this, well, this is simulated um, because <laughs> I don't have the live one pulled up because I don't think they're actually going all the way on the live feed of the data um but yes this is simulated so we will wait for call outs to confirm everything um but we are about seven minutes away from the seven minutes of hell long descent reports carry a lot very long descent you see the carrier on the downlink mm -hmm. flight level one so, Dan, how much money is invested in this? If you, if you, do you know how that figure in front of you? Uh, 2.8 billion. Uh, how much, then? I don't know what that covers. I don't have that in front of me. No, it's not in my documents. So, I can't tell you what that covered. But I know that this project so far is budgeted at 2.8 billion dollars. Frankly, and that's just this. That not including the retrieval of samples no so that'll be a as i say a separate mission but i think 2.8 billion is quite cheap for what they've achieved um i mean if we put it in in contrast with sls which is one of that like nasa's mm -hmm. own rocket that was uh it is replacing space shuttle uh i believe that's at 18 yeah. billion at the moment of development costs thank you wow um estimated and it's still not ready to fly um it's expendable so it costs two billion to develop each time under, uh, we're about five wow. and a half minutes from entry interface we're still receiving heartbeat tones uh, we expect to continue receiving heartbeat tones until about five minutes after entry at that time perseverance will be no longer in view of our antennas here on earth about 90 seconds prior to entry, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter should begin receiving telemetry from Perseverance and streaming it to Earth in near real time. Uh, there are a few expected short outages, such as when we have a plasma back out or when we enter the peak heating phase. Aside from these outages caused by the plasma blackout, antenna switching, or high dynamic events, spacecraft events, we should have telemetry until about 90 seconds after landing uh, a plasma blackout is 
when the signal from Perseverance isn't strong enough to make it through the superheated, super fast air flowing around the spacecraft all the way down to Earth. Once the temperature drops below that peak heating, we do reacquire the signal from Perseverance. We are currently about four and a half minutes from entry interface. Perseverance continues to report heartbeat tones, indicating everything is nominal. Four and a half minutes, just about, or four twelve on my screen, um, and until we start entering the atmosphere, which will start slowing down quite drastically. Why is this so nerve-wracking? It really shouldn't be. It's good. It's exciting. It is. It's very exciting. The exciting as it gets, really. And we can do it in our safety of our own homes, apart from if you're on the actual rover itself. And yet, then, then, you know, you're yeah. Well. I mean, I wouldn't want to go down on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I enjoyed that too much. Uh, I've just noticed my timer is about 10 seconds off of NASA's timer, but um, I'll ignore that when I say that we are at T minus 10 minutes until touchdown confirmation. We won't get that data. For several hours Dan, would you go to Mars? That's a, that's a big question. <sighs> I wouldn't be the first, but I would go. Golden ticket. You got it in 2050. Um, so you're not the first. Yeah, I would go. Damn, wow. It, it very much depends on the circumstances of going, if that makes sense. But um, I, I would say true, I, would, yeah. I would definitely consider going to Mars. Moon? Well, not bothered. Uh, not too bothered about moon. I can see <laughs> out my window, you know. Yeah, it's there, isn't it? Yeah. So you know, it's, it's like why, why would why why would I want to go to Cardiff, for example? I can see that out my window. <laughs> uh, those who don't know where we are, we are in West Supermare, and we can see kind of just across the water from us. Very much like we can see the moon very much in yeah, the sky. Yeah, exactly. The yeah, not Mars. It's, it's no big whoop. I went to Cardiff once. I horribly regretted it. God, so many sheep. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we are two minutes away from entry in face. I thought we are two minutes away from being beaten up by some Welsh people. <laughs> I mean, I probably am, but. <laughs> it's like a, you know, like a fact. You know, you're always two minutes away from being beaten up by a Welsh person. <laughs> it's probably really offensive. I sound like I'm on Jeremy Clarkson for God's sake. I apologise to the Welsh. <laughs> English are just as bad. Frankly, why don't why haven't we come on a spaceship? Oh, why don't we have NASA? Ninety seconds from entry interface and standing by for Mars reconnaissance orbiter to ninety seconds. The telemetry. See a lot of nervous people in that room. Uh. I can imagine they're not. I, I'm not sure what you can see, but I can only see the graphics, so I don't know what their faces are probably sweating. Uh, it like, should fade through for you in a second. A glass. Okay. So I see like a glass below his arsehole. That's an old expression. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's fading through. Yeah. I didn't quite switch for it in time, but there was a guy there who definitely wiped his brow. <laughs> Oh, uh, really? yeah. <laughs> uh, the classic. Oh. Ooh, About 40 that, seconds. The, the blue oh, my God. Yeah, the blue strips. I do like them. I, as I said, I really want to go to JPL. It's like... It looks really nice. It's a nice control room, you know, compared to the ones you see in films. Yes. ...is now relaying data from Perseverance. We're about 30 seconds from entry interface. Perseverance is going about... 5.2 kilometers per second and is about 190 kilometers altitude above the surface of Mars. Okay, I think I'm just going to reset my um, feed in audio, my audio feed, because I think it's quite delayed. Seconds from okay, entry interface point has been hit. Wow. Waiting on confirmation. 
150 kilometers from the surface of Mars. Uh, I lost connection with JPL there for a second, waiting for it to come yep. back. The guidance will be starting in about 15 seconds. Entry guidance. Touchdown in six minutes. So, so right now, the, uh... that rover is on the ground. It's on the ground, wow. Whether or not, in some shape or form. Whether or not it's in one piece, we will find out in six minutes. Fuck okay, that's mad, isn't it? And uh, so yeah. relative. So we are now. Well, I think we're at that point where we can't see anything. It's sort of mind blowing to think that somewhere that's not on this planet, but somewhere else, where there's a rock, where there's no one, something has just hit the ground. Yeah. It's very strange. I think what's strangest for me is like the fact that we don't know whether it has or not. Time is a weird thing. Yes. <laughs> like time and the really speed is. of light like... are weird. Um, the JPL feed has completely gone down. It looks like. I'm waiting to reestablish connection. We should be seeing heading alignment in about T minus fifth twenty five seconds. I cannot get my... Can you still hear the countdown now on Discord? Um, yes, I can, yeah. Okay, I'm going to unmute it then, because I can just pull it from here. We saw a small outage uh, of the UHF... Entry. There we go, we're back up. Orbiter ...during that we had peak heating phase, likely caused by the plasma blackout. Perseverance is still continuing to perform bank reversals in the atmosphere to control its distance to the landing target. Here we go. T minus four minutes until confirmation. Yeah. Place your bets down, people. Are we there? Have we made it? Is there another man made rover on Mars? At, we have entered heading alignment which means Perseverance is no longer trying to control the distance to Mars, but in to the target. Oh, I, yeah, I have lost, I've lost count down there entirely. Uh, do I still have NASA main feed? I don't. NASA main feed down as well. Oh gosh. Why is that? That's a good question. Lost the signal, I guess. Um, maybe YouTube's crashed. Have it? Can you can you still see anything? Are we still here? Are we still live? Our current velocity is. Um, I mean, numbers are going down. But I think it's a bit of a delay on my. I'm on T minus three twenty. From the surface. Parachute deploy in ten seconds. This is this is this is where. Here we go. This this is it. We are Basically, start. we are starting to straighten up and fly right jettison. where the and spacecraft will jettison the entry balance masses in preparation deployed. for parachute deploy and to roll over to give the radar a better look at the ground. Indicate shoot deploy. Yes, there we go. Call out. Shoot has been deployed. The has confirmed that the parachute has deployed and we are seeing significant deceleration. In the velocity, our current velocity is 440 meters per second at an altitude of about 12 kilometers from the surface of Mars. Okay, now next thing we should hear is heat shield separation. Heat shield set. There we go. Perseverance has now slowed to subsonic speeds and the heat shield has been separated. This allows both the radar and the cameras to get their first look at the surface. Current velocity is 145 meters per second and an altitude of about 10 km, nine and a half kilometers above the surface. Next thing we should hear is, or well, next thing that should happen is TRN image acquisition, which is the, uh, I believe the landing sensors will decide mm -hmm. where it's going to land. Okay. 
One minute thirty from touchdown. The sat nav, the most expensive sat nav ever made. Solution: three point three meters per second. Altitude: seven point four kilometers. Now has radar lock on the ground. That's fast. There we go. Radar lock on the ground. Meters per second. Six point six kilometers of the surface. Oh, clapping! I see a bit of clapping. <laughs> Perseverance is continuing to descend on the parachute. We are coming up on the initialization of terrain relative navigation. Back shell separation and, and sky crane will activate shortly after. Is about Any second. Per second at an altitude of 4.2 kilometers. LVS valid. We have confirmation that the lander vision system has produced a valid solution and part of terrain relative navigation. Yes. What do you mean? TBA is nominal. We have timing of the landing engines. Landing engines are on. Descent throttle down in about 13 seconds. Oh, no, sorry, 30 seconds on, on countdown now. 30 seconds on countdown now. We have confirmation that the back shell has separated. We are currently performing the divert maneuver. Current velocity is about 75 meters per second at an altitude of about a kilometer off the surface of Mars. Here in safety, Bravo. We have completed our terrain relative navigation. Current speed is about 30 meters per second, altitude of about 300 meters off the surface of Mars. SDS level. Constant velocity 140. Constant velocity accordion, altitude error. We have started our constant velocity accordion, which means we are conducting the sky crane, about to conduct the sky crane maneuver. We've lost the Earth tones. Throttle down. Confirmation on throttle down. Sky can maneuver has started. About 20 meters. Tango off Delta. Delta. Nominal. We're getting signals from M MRO. Bring me stable. Come on. Give us confirmation. Touchdown confirmed. Perseverance safely. Hey. Of Mars, ready wow. To yes. Of past life. Yes. There's Not a call bad, out. Eh? Perseverance is safe and on the ground. At this point, the descent stage has flown away to a safe distance. Perseverance is continuing to try, We're try and bring live views from JPL. Through Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter to Earth. My JPL stream is still down. <laughs> oh my god! There we go. We so we we did it. I guess. Um, yeah, no, my my JPL. All of my NASA streams are down. Perseverance has landed. Not bad. Well, Perseverance has tweeted that he's down and happy. Touchdown confirmed. We're going to wait for the images. So we we're just waiting on image acquisition where um we'll get our first images from the rover of its landing zone, see what kind of state it's in. Obviously it looks on the data like it's all right. Um but it might be upside down. Uh so we'll just ah, wait for I the image we'll just wait for the images to confirm that. That'll be again a, a few minutes. Um, it'll be a few minutes because obviously the, the image is probably going to be about maybe three quarters of a megabyte in size and uh, the connection to the rover is about 1.6 kilobytes. You have what you need. That's bad. I have what I need. We've got a live feed on Twitter, by the way, if that helps you. Uh, it doesn't because I can't easily grab that. Okay. But that's fine. Emero is still seeing a strong signal from the lander. <gasps> Light, this is OL3. <laughs> I am uh, ready to share. Is that ready to share the first images? Gosh, that would be good, wouldn't it? Pretty quick. OL3, you are go. <laughs> I think that was them getting the images. I haven't yet to see one. No, I'm not seeing anything yet either. Uh, I'm waiting for tweets. I have uh, the 
target point on the map when you are ready. We oh, are yep, ready. I got, I've got a very small right. image. Black and white. Looks like it's the right way up to me. Fantastic. I'm still I'm working on getting my JPL feedback so I can show people. Flight, I'll be uh, moving in, showing you the safe zone that we've landed in. I see an image. There we go. Oh, my there God. Go, there you go. There you oh. go. That. I mean, it doesn't look great at the moment because the lens will have a dust cover on it. Um, but that dust cover will yep. pull itself back. But that is an image of Perseverance down on Mars. Well done, Splendid NASA. Indeed. Well done, ULA. Well done. Wow. Oh, there you go. That's... There it is. Wow, that is. I've got a big close up. That is. The, uh, image, it's pretty clear, to be honest here. I am trying to get a high quality version of it. Stand by. Actually, it is come is from OL. the en engineer, the engineering OL. cameras. Oh well, can we get the other image? Should show the cliff. I'm sorry. Say what image again? I'm not understanding. Flight OL three. OL three. Uh, you can see uh, we've landed about uh, 35 meters from the nearest rocks that we could identify from orbit by their shadows. Wow, that's class. Copy OL3, PRN in action. Yep. Take that, Desiree. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So we are in Jezero. Remember this spot. It looks good. Wow. <laughs> so they're in the crater now. That, he that, is in the crater. It is in the crater. Copy OL3. I see. I thought we were going to drive through around. That is I'm mad. Sure that you have seen so it could be on the floor of an old ancient lake bed. It almost certainly is, um, which is fantastic, which is amazing. Wonderful. I don't have words to describe how awesome that is. Flight Electra's still in lock with the lander. I'm getting like to seconds surface. at a time of, of um, video from JPL. Quite a lot of pictures coming in. Now uh, a few oh. pictures. I'm going to see three, sorry. But yep. Team. Good, lovely. And the whole team that's not here as well. Excellent job. stones are very rounded uh, what I can do is I can try and quickly cheat the solution oh, go on cheat yourself on cheat yourself there we go okay that's not the also, engineering the feed I don't want that um, we have transitioned <laughs> to surface as reported downstairs uh, if you are part of that sure. story to the surface team make sure you're starting to work those inputs please uh, let me grab an engineering feed quickly. JPL raw. There we go. Uh, no, we don't. Now we go. Here we go. Oh. That's amazing. Look how happy they are. So they should be. They they really should be. That was an incredible landing. Even if we did have to hear most That's of it because we couldn't see anything. Awesome. You can see all the behind the... Um, with where the guy with the camera is, um, you can see all the mm. bottles of peanuts, which is, of course, a tradition oh, yes, at JPL sure, yes. um, 
to eat peanuts on a Mars... Is it a Mars landing or just any mission? I think it's a Mars landing. Um, that they have these bottles of JPL yeah. peanuts. Now, there's there's a good tidbit of information. I like that. That's a good, fun, useless fact. I do, I do know why, and I cannot remember. OL1, this is AL2, voice check. I read you five by. He's just going to get some peanuts. <laughs> Making sense. Taking a first pass at the surface transition report. Uh, I've got some numbers from the script. So I used to be looking up on its on its journey. It's going to try and chart the coastline, the ancient so coastline yes. of the crater. Yes. Um, picking up up to I believe thirty one samples along the way. That was it's ready for review. Are you thirty one samples? Gosh, that's a lot of samples. That's right. It's ready for review. Which obviously um, we will I'm hope to return to Earth at some point. Information from a handful uh, of folks yeah. on some of the values before. Very exciting. Very exciting. It is exhilarating. Uh, the process is to work it over email. I've sent out an email that they can reply to. Thank you. I think we're going to call our coverage there. Thanks, yeah, sure. uh, thanks for watching, folks. Um, yeah, that was a great landing. Uh, that so, was pretty damn cool. Joe Brooks, where can people find you online and uh, Atomic Rhubarb? Give yourself an advert. Oh, me? Oh, hello. Well, Oh, I give myself an ad, but well, you know, I'm I'm an actor. Oh, I saw it. I said we said you said that we lost a, a viewer. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm available on Atomic Rhubarb. He's back. Atomic Rhubarb on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Because I'm an actor, and that's my theatre company, which uh, has a lovely logo designed by a certain Mister DKTV. Don't know what um, you're talking about. <laughs> I, just, no, I don't. Oh, uh, you know. Um, but yes, so if you do like acting or like things in West Supermare, that's silly and weird. Please follow us on that. If not, um, my, I'm on Instagram, uh, JoeBrooks1997. Give me a follow. Why not? Treat yourself. And, you know, rhubarb as well. Uh, thanks for having me, Dan. It's been good fun. I've never done all these before ever, and this has been jolly good. I'd like to have, do some more. Well, I hope to get you back for some. Um, there's plenty of stuff lined up for this Ooh. year, so I will I will keep you updated with a calendar. And you can feel free to join me for any of them. Oh, my, um, Oh, yes, I definitely one, would. This has been really good fun. Um, I'll just get rid of the countdown there because we don't really need that anymore. And I will say, feel free to subscribe here and follow me on Twitter at Dan Kirkwood TV. Uh, and until next time, we'll see you next time. Cheerio. I, I, that was a terrible outro. I'm sorry. I'm just. Do you know what? Just roll the video.